Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about the effects of addition of poles and zeros into the system. And the second topic will be the frequency domain specification of the second order system. Friends, this is very important for the IES people actually, IES students, because sometimes in the examination directly they will ask what will happen when you let the pole into the system. The four options will be there. So you have to identify some time and you have to eliminate some time, okay, to get the proper answer. So I'm going to tell you what, what are the effects when we'll add the poles into the system, okay. And to validate whatever I'm going to tell you, you can validate all points, you know, how frame one transfer function, eight zero, sorry, pole first, then find out the, you know, the characteristics of that function and find out two times first before adding and second after adding and just compare you are getting these points or not the first point is the operating range of k decreases for system to be stable to make the system stable the range of the point the value of k is going to be decreased when you will add the pole into the system you can check it okay so whenever you will add the pole into the system the k value for the system stability will be decreased isn't it check it second point relative stability reduces means before the system will be stable after adding the poles the relative stability will decrease means if this relative stability for the practical example if i'll consider by the amount of money you have initially if you have 100 rupee after adding one pole you will be remain with 50 rupee only stability is going to decrease here stability i'm comparing with the value of money or the whatever money you are holding okay so relative stability stability is going to decrease when you are going to add one pole into the system i hope it's clear to you system becomes more oscillatory when you let the pole system will become more oscillatory more oscillatory means the damping factor will going to reduce or increased yes definitely it's going to decrease isn't it so what about the breakaway point the breakaway points have to are the imaginary axis everything is going bad for the poles when you are adding the poles these are like <coughs> you know <coughs> i'm sorry these all points are looking like disadvantages okay so this pole is kind of blunder thing you know the operating range is going to decrease relative stability is going to decrease system become more oscillatory this the drawback this, this, these are the not desired values okay so the point is the breakaway point step towards the imaginary axis everything is going imaginary axis see imaginary axis the border line be, between between stable system unstable system if your poles or characteristic rules or whatever are moving to the RHS, it means the system is going to be unstable. So poles will make system unstable. Remember the most important point is the addition of poles will make the system more unstable. Okay. This is not mean that directly at the pole and system will become unstable. No. That's why I'm using relative stability. Okay. Shallow. Next. The damping factor decreases, definitely, damping factor decreases, that's why the system become more oscillatory, isn't it? Okay, fine. So, and system becomes unstable here. The rise time decreases, definitely, the rise time will also decrease, you know, very well. For the system, having the undamped system, the rise time is, you know, very, very, very low. Immediately, it will rise itself, isn't it? <coughs> So, the addition of poles into the system is over. Now we'll see the super zero. I like zero, you know. When we add the zero into the system, everything will be like advantageous. See, see one by one. System becomes stable. Koon nahi chata bhiya. Yes, system becomes stable. Bhiya hai. Relative stability improves. Wah. Next, range of K for stability increases. This may be disadvantages, range of K for the stability, but we are not looking for the advantages or disadvantages. Just remember the range of K value for the stability increases. So this is kind of advantage also, you know, the value of K will be, range will be more, means, means you can choose any value in, in, in between them, isn't it? So system becomes less oscillatory, 
will go to the breakaway point shift was the left side of the display. In the pole, while adding the poles into the system, the breakaway points were shifting for the right hand side. Means, means they were coming nearer to the imaginary axis. Next point is the damping factor increases. Damping factor increases. Yes. Next point is bandwidth decreases. So bandwidth decreases, rise time will increase. You know very well because bandwidth into rise time is constant. Okay, the multiplication of the bandwidth and rise time is the constant. Okay, so I think this point is clear. Now the second topic today we are going to discuss is frequency domain specification. So let's come here the frequency domain analysis or frequency domain specifications. Okay. So generally here we are taking the second order system. So the best example of the second order system is the RLC circuit. Isn't it? RLC circuit is the second order system. Why? Because we have only two memory elements. Okay. And you know very well. Let me draw also. Here we are going to apply input. Here we are taking the output. Okay. So we'll do the specific, we'll, uh, you know, come with the transfer function of this RLC circuit. So, you know, very well, you studied this thing in network theory also. The output characteristics will be like this. Is it it where omega r at the omega r, this is the resonance frequency, you'll get the maximum, you know, the magnitude, isn't it? So in the control system, you know, the everything will be validated with respect to this diagram. Omega R resonance frequency will be okay. I'll come later. First, I'll show you uh, this system. Okay, wait. So, do the analysis, find out the transfer function, and you'll get the second order system. You know, the second order system transfer function. Equate this system, you'll get zeta. Your zeta will be R by 2 C by L zeta the damping ratio for this system you will get r by 2 c by l okay and instead of this if you have the parallel circuit this is for the series circuit they are connected in series isn't it this is the series rlc and if you have parallel rlc the zeta you will get will be 1 by 2 r l by c this is for the parallel Okay, remember this thing. Now, the quality factor is also you studied there, but in terms of control system zeta parameter, it is always 1 by 2 zeta. 1 by 2 zeta is nothing but your quality factor. Your quality factor, and in terms of R, L, and C, it is like this 1 by R, L by C. You know very well what is the zeta. Here is the zeta. Just put the value. Remember this thing that Q, that Q is nothing but the quality factor. The quality factor is 1 by 2 zeta. Okay. 1 by 2 zeta or 0.5 by zeta. This is nothing but your Q. Okay. Now let's come to the very, very important thing that is the resonant frequency. In this graph, this frequency in terms of system parameter that is uh, zeta, what is the omega r? So it is given by omega n natural frequency of oscillation 1 minus 2 zeta square. Here it is radian per second. Okay, friends, this is the omega r, the resonant frequency we are talking about, the frequency at which we are getting the maximum amplitude or the magnitude of the system, isn't it? So you can compare this with omega d, the damping frequency we have seen that is omega n and the root of 1 minus zeta square. But here instead of zeta, you have 2 zeta square. So please remember this. Now, now this everything study is valid only for the zeta. This is the frequency domain analysis only for the zeta less than 1 by root 2. And in fact, for all second order system, in the control system, whatever we are going to design, this is our, you know, aim that zeta should be below 0 0.707, always 0 0.707.
okay basically this range is between 0.3 to 0.8 actually okay this is the actual range so for all system this should be less than 0.707 okay so we have seen the omega r so corresponding to this omega r now we'll talk about the mr that is the uh, magnitude at omega r and this is given by q divided by 1 minus zeta square very easy q divided by 1 by zeta square root okay and just now we have seen the q is nothing but 2 zeta so this is another formula to remember this very important okay so better to remember q by under root of 1 minus zeta square the q you know 1 by 2 zeta okay now the bandwidth the, what is the bandwidth here lower cutoff and upper cutoff up to here this is the bandwidth of the system isn't it so we have the formula for bandwidth also and this formula is for the bandwidth the bandwidth formula is both lamba choda bada formula omega n start the root here you will write 1 minus 2 zeta square plus alternatingly you will use the minus and plus okay in alternative manner 1 minus 2 zeta square then plus you will start root again this is 2 minus 4 zeta uh, square plus 4 zeta to the power 4 so plus minus plus minus plus okay so this is the formula bandwidth is is is, is nothing but omega n under root of 1 minus 2 zeta square plus again under root inside 2 minus 4 zeta square plus 4 zeta to the power 4 okay friends so this is all about the frequency domain uh, specification of the second order system okay so today we discuss two topics effects of poles and zeros into the system and the frequency domain specification we'll meet with the new topic in the next unit or in the next video okay so for new updates you can subscribe getmatic and if you have doubts you can find us on the facebook for the doubts only We'll meet in the next lecture. Till then, take care and bye.